Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to put your race cars in high gear. Tonight on the Josh Nolan and Oliver S. Full Throttle Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube, we have with us a huge racing superstar and racing sensation, Byron Uray. Welcome to the show, Byron. Hi. So, Byron, let's talk about your racing career. Okay. So, you had a dream for a few years. What was your dream about? Well, I always wanted to go racing. It's a, I would say it's a huge part of our family or racing. My dad used to race and he was a big racing fan growing up and following in his footsteps. Okay. What was that experience like when you found out you were getting a race car? Um, I mean, I was happy but i mean nervous because you don't know what's going to happen after that so okay how did you come up with your race car number um 71 was my dad's original number i'm not sure where he got it from i think he might have got it from gary wolford but i picked that because just want to follow my dad and what he what he did. Okay, so Byron, you were saying when you got your race car and you found out you were, you were nervous, what were you nervous about most? Well, just like racing in general is like competitive and all like going through your head and like you don't know what's going to happen next after you get that car. Like he, my dad told me we're not going to be racing every race, but but what happened what happened was we ended up racing every race. So Okay. Okay. So when you started your racing career, Byron, what goals did you set for yourself for your career? Um, I really didn't have goals other than I really wanted to win, which I ended up doing twice, which I was pretty happy about. So that's basically you have my a goal. You have achieved both your goals, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Are you hard on yourself on race weekend? Oh, yeah. Really hard on myself. Okay. Why are you hard on yourself on race weekend? I really don't know. I just get get upset with myself. Like, I should have done this instead of that. I should have done that instead of this. Okay. Okay, what was it like to get your first and second wins in your racing career? The first one was pretty exciting because, like, we our car was, like, on and off. Like, we had a good run, then we might have had a bad run, then we had a few good runs and then a bad run. But then I got that final win. I was so happy. Last race of the night, it was probably, like, 11, 12 o'clock, so... What I did is I got up, st stood on my car, and celebrated. And then the second race win, I mean, it's two in a row. I wasn't as excited, but still excited. Okay. So when you had your first and second win, Byron, in your quarter midget, what was your race days like, you know, going into, into those features? Um, I mean, my... Like, it's sort of like I I get in the feature and my body's, like, filled up with nervousness because anything can happen in that feature. Yeah. Okay. What is it like when you struggle on race weekend? What What is that mentality like for you? I just, I guess, get a little annoyed at myself and get hard on myself because, like, I'm not racing well. I'm in the back back your few or the, in the back few and I just get a little more like annoyed and not running the, as good of a line as I usually do. So you raced at Susquehanna quarter mid association, quarter mid quarter midget association speedway this year. What was yeah. that like to race that, that clock, that, that track and that, that with that group? I mean, like since the track's closing down, like, being one of the last few people to race on that is like happy, but also the emotions for the track leaving are pretty sad because like 
that's a lot of the kids' home tracks, and they yeah. grew up basically there. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. So, um, where are you going to race at next year, Byron? Um, we, we are going to Blackbird. Um, it's one hour, 30 minutes, but I think I've seen some videos of the track. It looks wider, but the turns are tighter and I haven't gone on it yet. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Okay. Are you looking forward to going to racing this new track next year? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's a new track and new tracks are exciting. So. So what are you looking forward to most going into next year? Um, I'm just looking forward to having some good runs in Senior Honda because Senior Honda is a struggle and racing at a new track. I'm hoping to make a few features at least. We're getting a new motor next year, and my dad thinks our motor is a little underpowered than everybody else's. So, so Byron, so, uh, so with your crew – you the communication between you you and your crew is that go pretty well between you guys um yeah but i really like the only person i really communicate with with my crew is my dad and all i tell him is how the car did during the heat like if i need more tight which i usually need need more tight the last few senior honda races so byron what have you learned from your first year in quarter measure racing? I I learned the line. I mean, I learned how to basically drive one of them, a quarter midget. And, I mean, I learned how to get a little bit aggressive. And, like, I figured out, like, the hand motions and the flags and all that. So, okay, have you learned how to read the track now, too, or not? Um, I mean... Not really, but I I I know like where grip is and where not. Like if I see grip somewhere, I know like that's where it's gonna be probably running. Like as the track gets more driven in, the darker it gets and the more grip you get. So okay, so Byron, um, you know you your rookie campaign and quarter midgets is this year. You're in um senior hunting out. So did you progress pretty fast? Through your rookie campaign? So, Red Rookie, I think it was like three or four races. And then they moved me up to Blue, which I think was also three or four races. And then they had like a like a rookie Honda class where like they put all the rookies that they think have a chance to move up to Honda and put that in. So, they had put them in senior. So, they had two races. And in those two races, I sweeped both of them. That's, those were the two wins races that I won so they moved okay. all, all the rookies up or all the the free blue rookies up there to senior so after that I ran senior for a little bit I probably ran three or four times this year and I think I made two features but like it was everybody makes the features in those two races so okay so what is your long-term goals with your racing career, Byron? My long-term goal is to make it NASCAR or make it World of Outlaws. or And I just want to be racing for a long time. Get okay. maybe race until I'm 50, maybe. I don't know. Okay, okay. So, Byron, you know, it's pretty cool to have you on this racing show, talking to you about your racing career. Um. So, you know, as kids come into this sport, what could you kind of say to kind of help motivate them to, to get into a race car and motivate them with their racing careers? So, about that is, like, in the rookie classes, you can see some kids get in the car and they're just crying because they're scared. And I'm just going to say you should just go for it. And when when I get out on that track, all the nervousness, all the nervousness goes away and it turns into racing. So. Okay, okay. Okay. So, Byron, have you been watching the Tulsa shootout at all this week? No. Oh, there's there's quite a few former quarter kids that are racing in that. 
So yeah, definitely. Um, so Byron, um, gonna turn the mic over to you. You can ask me some questions now if you'd like. How's that? Okay. Yeah. So my first question is, is do you have a favorite World of Outlaw driver? You know, I, I have had a few and they a lot of them have retired. Um, Byron, you know, coming up when I was a kid your age, I used to follow Doug Wolfgang just nonstop. And when he got out of it, then I had to go to a different driver. And then it just so happens, kind of got away from sprint car racing for a little while. Um, got back into it on the local side, um, got by the name of Gordy Voglar, and, you know, going to watch him race. And then it just kind of motivated me to get back, you know, into following sprint car racing more. And then I, then I ended up being a fan of Joy Saldana's and then Craig Delansky's. And both of them guys are retired. Well, then I went and became a, a fan of Shane Stewart's. And now he's retired. So they're like, who do you go for? And I'm just like, I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any racing experience at all? Um, I don't. I been I was a racing fan for 30 plus years. And that's kind of how I got into being a racing show host is I had a friend of mine that's a race car driver and his son uh, races go-karts and they kind of were like, just like, let's give this a shot. Okay. So we started with 30 viewers and then just progressively moved up the ladder. And it's just really phenomenal to do this for you kids and young adults. Yeah. So like, what is your favorite type of racing? I love dirt racing, dirt racing. And I love, some NASCAR stuff back when I was growing up, Byron, you know, I'll tell you back when I was growing up, NASCAR wise is not what it used to be when I was growing up back when yeah. I was growing up, they threw the green flag, no stage race. It was just like going nonstop until that green flag dropped and they had yellow flags in between. That's fine. But it was, it was quite crazy back in the day. Um, you know, they had Dale Earnhardt senior. That was just like phenomenal back in the day. Um, Tim Richmond, when I was six years old, he was he was the only one back in the day that could run door to door with um, uh, Dale Earnhardt. And um, you know, I remember back in the day, Byron watching Alan Kowicki win his championship, and that's that's a true underdog story. If you get a chance to watch his story, it is really interesting because he was essentially up until Tony Stewart did it. He was like the only owner driver to ever win a NASCAR championship. And the story goes, Byron, is, you know, he had the opportunity to drive for different car owners when he started out getting into NASCAR. And they says, well, Alan, are you going to drive for, you know, Junior Johnson or anybody like that? And he's like, no, I'm going to do this my way. He says, I've come up through ASA racing and local racing. And he said, I'm just going to move down to Charlotte and like, Alan, you don't even have a team to go with. You're just going down there with like a small trailer and a pickup. And he goes down to Charlotte, North Carolina, and runs his whole rookie NASCAR campaign with only two NASCARs in his shop. He takes rookie of the year, Byron, and he didn't win his first race until 1988. And uh, they asked him, they says, well, you know, Alan, you ever win a race? What's, what's your going to, what's your celebratory going to be like? And he says, you know, um, I'm my heritage is I'm Polish. So he said, I'm going to do a reverse victory lap around the track and call it the Polish victory lap. Okay. So 1988 at Phoenix, he wins the race, his first race. And he does this reverse victory lap. Well then, you know, everybody's like, you know, Alan, you know, chances of you winning a NASCAR championship or it's not going to happen. And he's like, you know, just have a little faith in me. It's it, 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 it can happen. We'll see what happens. Well, going into the 1992 NASCAR season, Byron, he had a sponsor for two races and two races only. And they says, well, you know, we're going to see how you do. But after these two races, you know, if we don't think you're capable of it, we'll pull our name off the car. Well, after two races, he was having an up and down season. They're like, we'll just stick it out. Well, crazy enough, Byron, the story goes is the year he won the championship. There was four guys vying for that championship. Ernie Irvin, Davey Ellison, Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki. Ernie Irvin and Davey Ellison got taken out in a, in a wreck on the track. So that got down to Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki. Alan Kowicki's crew said to him, Alan, if you want to win this championship, 
you have to lead the most laps. So, on fuel fuel mileage, he stayed out on the track for an extra one to two laps and got a five to ten point advantage and won the championship by a mere five to ten points. Yeah. I mean, I agree yeah. that NASCAR isn't as good as it used to be because now yeah. you have the playoffs instead of the chase. And in the chase, like, yeah. it wasn't just four drivers that could win. Like, basically any driver in the chase could yeah. win. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. You said, and, like... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Byron. You like <laughs> that you've been a racing fan for 30 years. Is that the only thing that encourages you to have, like, a racing show? Um, no, you know, it's just working with all of your drivers and stuff like that. And the passion for the sport, like I said, I've been passionate about the sport since I've been six years old. And that's just been, my mom and dad have always said to me, you know, Josh, that's all you do is eat, sleep and breathe racing, do something with it. I was like, yeah, whatever. So I had friends of mine that just said, you know, let's go with it. And I says, okay. So we just went with it and it just took off as yeah. 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 So yeah. You, if you have a passion to do something, think, go with that passion and go with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been told that I have a passion for racing, and I guess my dad decided, hey, we're going to go with that. So got yeah. in this quarter midget, and now here I am. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, Byron, I have dealt with the likes of you kids since 2018. I love going into the pits, talking to drivers, talking to them about, hey, how's their race weekend going, and stuff like that. And it's just kind of phenomenal to sit down and talk to you guys and find out your stories. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, makes sense because, like, you just love talking to the kids and about what their racing career is going with right now, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Byron, um, you know, you know, question I have for you is, do you ever watch the Indy 500 at all? No, I don't. I mean, I don't know where you, where you would be able to find it on streaming. Um, it's, on, it's, it's on, Um, if you have TV, you could find it on ABC or NBC, but um, you can find it on YouTube even. That race is just phenomenal all on its own, Byron. And I'll tell you what, you ever get the chance to race the Indy 500, it'd be worth the while to do that and i would be extremely proud of you for doing that you know i'm extremely proud of you as a race car driver right now but you know to to see you race the indy 500 i can say i know that guy i know that guy i had him on my racing show and you know crazy enough you know byron one of the guys i looked up to as an indy car driver and i he could do things on an on an oval track that just you're just like wow i can't believe this guy is doing this my favorite indy car driver was dan weldon Weldon, just phenomenal. Have you ever heard of that name at all? Um, I'm not sure if this is the right person, but I think, didn't he pass away in a car? Yep, at Las Vegas back in 2011. Yeah. But, lead, but leading up to that, um, you know, he had some pretty interesting stories himself, Byron. You know, race car drivers, they collect things. I know you probably collect things too. Um, his collection was, instead of collecting like die cast and helmets, he was a really weird driver. And you could say, man, I can't believe this guy is doing this. He actually collected Byron new pairs of tennis shoes because he hated dirty pairs of tennis shoes. He hated it. And they says, well, Dan, why, you know, you hate dirty pairs of tennis shoes. How many pairs of tennis shoes do you have in your closet? And he says, you know, ever since I've been a kid all the way up until now, you know, I've collected shoes. And he, they says, well, how many pairs do you have in your closet now? And he says, I have over, I have over 300 brand new pairs of Pumas in my closet. Well, that's that's a weird thing to collect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and he was, you know, when it come down to it, Byron, he was there to inspire you guys as race coordinators. He loved being about the fans. Even if he had to be late for a driver's meeting, he's like, you know, I spend the time with the fans. If I'm late to the driver's meeting, so what? And when he went and won his last Indy 500, crazy enough, Byron, his wife says, says, did an interview, and she says, you know, it was really quite crazy year. Dan had been let go by Panther Racing, and they says he had offers to drive for different teams, but he turned around and said to his wife, he says, you know, Susie, I am not going to commit to a team 
unless I'm cap- the team is capable of winning. And she says, okay, so what are you going to do? And he said, well, I'm going to take that time to spend with you and the kids because I have two little boys. And she says, okay. So lo and behold, Byron, Brian Herta and Sam Schmidt got a hold of him and says, you know, Dan, we have this opportunity for you to race the Indy 500. And this car is capable of winning. We're going to make sure you have the best crew. And he's like, really? And so he committed to it, driving the number 98 William Rast Big Machine Records Indy car. And he hadn't led a single lap in the whole race. He had finished, he was running third. Well, on the final lap, coming out of corner four, the guy that was leading was the new driver that took over for him at Panther Racing. He went too wide into corners three and four and hit the outside wall. Well, Dan threaded his way through lap traffic in the car that was smacked in the outside wall and won the Indy 500 on the last lap. That's a miracle. Yeah, it is. And, you know, Byron, um, to win the Indy 500 is something prestigious. It is something that, you know, you can look back on your career and say, man, I can't believe I've accomplished this. It It is something totally awesome. Um, I've, I've known people that have worked for IndyCar teams and said, you know, it's a phenomenal experience. Um, what's really quite, quite crazy is your whole month of May, because you have to be in Indianapolis for a whole month. You have to be at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for a whole month. And you're there, and you're, you're, when you go to and from the track, you have a police escort to, to, to and from the track, which is cool. Um, then when you get to the track, Byron, you're there to practice, qualify, attend team meetings, sponsorship opportunities, and stuff like that. Well, then when you're also at the track, um, you qualify for the Indy 500. The day before the 500, you have um, – actually, a couple days before the 500. The Friday, they have what is called Carb Day. Well, then after Carb Day, you go and you take part in the biggest autograph session you can ever imagine. It's a six-hour autograph session. You're signing autographs for six hours. <laughs> and, I mean, your hand will get cramped up. You will be like, yeah, this is getting crazy. And the day, uh, the day before the 500, you get to go – you get to be on a parade and ride downtown Indianapolis in convertible pace cars where your starting spot is. So whoever you want to designate to ride with you, like your mom or your dad, they can ride with you in the parade. That would be, yeah, in convertibles. And if you win the Indy 500, Byron, you get a – they ask you this when you, when you qualify for the Indy 500. They ask you, they hand you a card, and on this card it says your name on it. And what, what, what's your favorite kind of milk? So they'll ask you that. So what, what's your favorite kind of milk, Byron? My favorite kind of what? Milk. Milk. Milk? Milk. Yeah. Uh, 1%. Okay. So you'll put down 1% milk because when if you win the Indy 500, you get presented a frosty, ice-cold glass, glass bottle of milk. And you get to take two sips of that, drink it, dump it all over your hat, whatever. And then you get um, a winner's wreath that come, gets around your neck. And then also, then, Byron, you get some huge grand prizes. Um, one of them is, is you get a separate check from your crew. Your crew gets a separate check from you. Your check to yourself is over $3.5 million. How much for the crew? The crew gets um, their own check, but I, I can't remember what they all make, but you get $3.5 million to yourself. And then um, on top of that, Byron, they will ask you, hey, Byron, do you know what one of the sponsors of the Indy 500 is? And you'll be like, man, I believe it's Chevrolet. You're like, well, okay, Chevrolet is. So here's the keys to a brand-new Chevy Corvette for one of the Indy 500. I'll take that. Yeah. I'm <laughs> oh, a yeah. Chevy person, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll have you'll get a miniature Borg Warner trophy. But the big Borg Warner trophy that, that you, sits on your car in Victory Lane, what they do is they take a picture of your face. They send it off to the sculptor, and the sculptor sculpts, um, sculpts your face into the trophy in sterling silver. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yep. And you're forever known as the Indianapolis 500 champion. And you I'll also say- get a diamond. you also get a diamond championship ring on top of it. I'll I'll make something that says you you legally have to call me Indianapolis 500 winner Byron Yuri. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, 
and like I said, after you win the Indy 500, then they take you for a lap around the track after the race is over, and you get to wave to the fans and you get to do an interview from the pace car. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, Byron, the reason why it's so prestigious that race is because the seating capacity at that track is five hundred thousand people. That's that's like um, that's half a million people. So that's quite yeah. a bit. Oh yeah! Could you imagine a half out. a million? Could you imagine a half a million people coming to watch you race? The pressure will be on. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep, exactly. And your Indy cars at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Byron. I kid you not. On an oval track that size, you cover a football field a second. Two hundred and forty miles an hour. Can you imagine going that fast? No. I don't want to. <laughs> and what's really cool, Byron, is your Indy car, you know, your steering wheel of your race car, that's that's your steering wheel. In your Indy car, when you get ready to go out there and do a test session with it, or when you get picked up by a team, your steering wheel is, is something all on its all. Because everything that is in your laptop of your computer is in that steering wheel. Yeah. I mean those you have a those you have a formula. switch on your steering wheel. Yeah, go ahead. The Formula One steering wheels and the um, Indy car steering wheels are definitely high technology wheels. Or you have a do you have a you have a switch on your steering wheel, Byron, that controls the air conditioner in your helmet. You have an air conditioner in your helmet. Oh, I, can you believe that? Can yeah. you believe that? I want then you have another regular. Then car. you have another. Then you have another switch in your Indy car helmet that you can pump. They, that can pump cold water into you, into you through a straw through the front part of your helmet all day long. Well, that, <laughs> that's high technology stuff. Oh, yeah. And then the other the button on the steering wheel is you can press that when you come in the pits. And when you come into your pit stall, it automatically jacks your car up off the ground so they can change tires. I wish you could do that with my quarter midget. Just yeah. come in and yeah. make an Come in, make a adjustment or something. We need a jack. Oh, boop. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's really kind of cool, Byron, is take a guess how long it takes them to change tires and fuel and do a couple adjustments. And, there's and anything, you know, like, I mean, I've seen some Formula One pit stops and they're extremely fast. If it's anything like that, five in between three and five seconds. You are actually back on the track between 5 and 16.5 seconds back on the track. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, that might be NASCAR times if you get out, out back on the track. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And, 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 you're, and, you're, and you come around for your final lap, Byron, if you're leading the Indy 500, your crew and your car owner will be coming across your radio saying, okay, now, Byron, Calm down. You're on the final lap. You you've got four turns to go, and you're going to be the Indy 500 champion. So just calm down. And when you cross that yard of brick, your crew will come over the radio and say, "Byron, you're now the Indianapolis 500 champion. What do you have to say?" (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like. Just all they have to tell me is, hey, you're 14 seconds down front, and I'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, exactly. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And a lot of drivers, when they get into victory lane, they start crying because it's it's a huge monumental experience. I don't think I'll get that emotional. I don't know. Or NASCAR yeah. drivers that cry over a NASCAR Cup Series championship. And... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, do you have any other? Do you have any other questions for me, Byron? Um, no, can't think of any. Oh, okay. So, Byron, do you have a racing page that the racing fans can follow you on? Um, the Byron Your Racing page on Facebook. Okay, and are you presently looking for sponsors going into next year? Yes. Okay, so go hit up Byron Uray Racing on Facebook. 
um, he and because he would appreciate the sponsorship on his race cars as he gets further into his racing career. So reach out to Byron and his family there. Also, ladies and gentlemen, go press like on that page there because Byron would appreciate the racing fans as he gets further into his racing career. Yeah, definitely will. Yes, yes. So before I let you go, Byron, do you have a racing nickname? Not yet, but one of my my probably will end up being Flipper because I flipped this year. And also, I just want to say if my sponsors see this, thanks to all of them. Thank you very much, Byron, for being on the racing show with us tonight. Um, I will let you step out, Byron. I will call you in a few minutes to thank you in person. Um, but it's been our pleasure to sit down and talk to you tonight. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'll let you step out now, Byron. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Byron Uray, um, quarter midget driver at Susquehanna Speedway. He's picked up two wins this year. Um, he's going to be racing at Blackbird Speedway going into next year. Um, definitely, definitely a kid you're going to definitely want to watch and um, definitely want to follow. He's very, very intelligent and very, very smart and very, very awesome kid. Very, very awesome kid. Um, but um, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we go any further, Further, let's give a little racing news update for y'all. I'll tell you what, the, the Tulsa shootout has been awesome to watch. Um, congratulations goes out to Cannon Posey for picking up a heat race win today. Congratulations to uh, Zach Weigel for making it into tomorrow's action. Also, congratulations goes out to Gage Peel for winning his heat race. And um, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, all of these guys are doing phenomenal. Congratulations goes out to Corbin Ruschenberg and um, everybody else. Um, definitely, 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 ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow's action kicks off. Um, day Today is the day three of the um, Tulsa shootout, so go check that out on Flow Racing. Um, definitely, 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 it's pretty phenomenal. Um, we've got kids. Oh, con uh, congratulations to Dustin Phillips out there, ladies and gentlemen, too, for picking up the feet is his um, heat race win. Um, also, we've got um, Kyle Cravota down there racing, like I said, and um, Bradley Cox is down there racing, Gavin Bochelle. Um, that's just, just to name a few, ladies and gentlemen, down there. But um, good luck to all them drivers down there racing. Um, but, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to thank our sponsors, Your Track Race Cars and Company. DirtTrackRacecars.com. Go hit them up for all your racing diecast needs. They've got some pretty awesome 164 scale sprint cars out there. Three of Doug Wolfgang's, one of Sammy Swindell's, and one of Dale Lasoski's. So go snag them up. Also, ladies and gentlemen, go hit up um, Dirt Track Race Cars and Company, DirtTrackRacecars.com. For they have also some 124 scale um, classic stock cars and mods um, that are painted pure white, and you can design the paint scheme. Uh, on them yourself. Also, um, they have a racing club you can join and be the first ones to, if you join that club, you can be the first ones to be notified of the new 164 scale sprint cars coming out. Um, also, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to thank Brody Manning Motorsports for being a part of this racing show with me tonight. Uh, being a part of this racing show, sorry. And also New England Hemophilia Association and Walking with Waylon. Um, Waylon Page, that is. Waylon does some pretty awesome adventures. But um, if you guys would like to sponsor our racing show or be on our racing show, you can text us at text us or call us at 712-209-7138, or you can email us at jjnolan151 at gmail.com. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a good night. Catch you later on another episode of the Josh Nolan and Oliver S. Full Throttle Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube. And continue going high speed on that racetrack.